Greetings to you and welcome to our virtual worship service of the First Congregational Church of Portland, Connecticut. We are a member of the denomination, the United Church of Christ, and our congregation is open and affirming. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. I'm Jane Hawken, the pastor, and I thank you for joining us. Please view the children's message created by Ann Labby for today, and also Kasha Bro's prelude, and the hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. The hymn talks about the seasons, and today's service focuses on summertime, and particularly on heat. From the book of Genesis, we hear God's word of promise, as long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never cease. So let us praise God for this summer day and for the seasons that witness to God's abiding faithfulness and promises. Come. Let us worship our Lord. Our scripture lesson for today is taken from Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 5 through 10. Thus says the Lord, cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord they shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness in an uninhabited sea land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of the drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is devious above all else. It is perverse. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart to give to all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doings. Here ends the lesson. It was a year ago this very weekend that health advisories had been issued due to record high heat. The temperature was so high and the heat was so oppressive that we couldn't even worship in our sanctuary. Instead, we opted to meet in the air-conditioned wing of our building in a large upstairs classroom. This seemed so radical, so unprecedented, and so smart to move from the unbearably hot sanctuary to the cool, comfortable classroom. And yet, look where we are today. Due to another health advisory, here we are worshiping, not in the sanctuary, but from the porch at my home. Next Sunday, Karen Reddick will lead the worship service from the gazebo of our church's beautiful memorial garden. When all is said and done, who knows where else we will end up in the weeks to come. Too bad it's not just heat and high outdoor temperatures we have to worry about. Those pre-pandemic concerns seem like a distant memory, although it is quite warm these days. In fact, you could say that we are in the midst of a heat wave. Maybe you've been singing the lyrics. We're having a heat wave, a tropical heat wave. The temperature's rising. It isn't surprising. She certainly can, can, can. Well, that song was written by Irving Berlin 
1933, and it has been recorded by singers for the past 87 years. The song is not to be confused with the Motown hit, Heat Wave, released 30 years later in 1963. It was first sung by Martha and the Vandellas, later by the Supremes, and followed by Linda Ronstadt and others. Recently, the country has been facing a heat wave. People take refuge in air-conditioned buildings or in the spray of a street fire hydrant, or they plug in a fan or take a cool shower. Still others seek relief from the heat on a boat, at the beach, at a lake, pond, river, or swimming pool. That is, if you can find one open. Furthermore, I suppose it's no comfort to say that there have been hotter places and times. In fact, the hottest temperature ever recorded on planet Earth wasn't in Africa or in the Middle East, but in the United States. Specifically, it was in Death Valley, California on July 10th, 1913, when it hit 134 degrees. Well, that singular and spectacular event happened over 100 years ago, but just on Monday, it hit 128 degrees there. These days, we are increasingly aware of extreme temperatures created by climate change. And if the trend continues and we fail to do what we can to combat global warming, it is estimated by the year 2050, some of our hottest environments will become uninhabitable environments, notably in regions of Iran, Libya, Tunisia, Mali, and Sudan. In addition to caring about the at-risk people who are most adversely affected by dangerous climate conditions and weather patterns, the Bible calls us to be stewards of the earth. And the Bible calls us to praise God, the creator of all creation. The people of biblical times would have been particularly vulnerable to climate and weather, and especially to heat. References in the Hebrew scriptures range from warm days to desiccating heat. So the people knew hot days as well as hot emotions, and the heat of anger gets mentioned in the Bible. For example, in Psalm 32, when people don't confess their sin and forego God's forgiveness, it's like experiencing suffocating heat. Verses 1 through 4 say, Happy are those whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Happy are those to whom the Lord imputes no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. While I kept silence, my body wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. We all know that the heat of summer can sap our strength, dry up our energy, wilt our spirits, droop our patience, and leave us lethargic, weary, and enervated. We might have 21st century ways of dealing with the heat, but we're not so different from our biblical forebears when it comes to how heat affects us and other living things, such as plants. 
The passage from Jeremiah uses parched plants and shriveled shrubs as a way to illustrate the prophet's point that we need to trust in God. As it says, those who turn away from God will be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness in an uninhabited salt land. As we know, the scripture passage is much more about the human heart than about landscaping tips. It's about having faith in God and not in mere mortals. Jeremiah writes, Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green in the year of the drought. It is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. So we need to trust in God, whether it's freezing or sweltering, balmy or blistering, cold or hot. Lately, we've been hearing a lot about hot spots. Not so much about the weather, but in relation to the coronavirus. I read an inspiring article that I'd like to share with you about 40, a 45-year-old woman named Tanya Waddell. She's a dialysis nurse based in Martinsville, Virginia. She has volunteered to travel to three coronavirus hotspots to work in overwhelmed and overextended hospitals. In early April, she went to New Jersey to treat patients with COVID-19. For two weeks in Newark, as the article says, Tanya experienced the impact of the virus firsthand. She saw patients on ventilators, some stricken by acute kidney injury and needing dialysis, and exhausted ICU nurses, their faces wrinkled and bruised from wearing goggles for endless, endless shifts. She also saw death. She said at the time, I thought two weeks was my limit, honestly. I didn't really realize I could stay longer. I almost allowed fear to take over. But instead, she volunteered for a three-week deployment in Boston. And then she spent an additional two weeks in Chicago. And each time she filled her suitcase with scrubs, a reusable face shield, a plate, and silverware. She also packed her Bible and the plush, sloth stuffed animal that her boyfriend gave to her. And why did she go when she didn't have to do it? She said, I just feel like it's my calling to help. I just couldn't sit by and watch others struggle. She did say she grew exasperated reading social media posts that tried to debunk the threat of the virus. She felt overwhelmed when even her friends or fellow church members would ask her, is it as real as they make it out to be? As the article said, Waddell could have told them about the adult male patient in Newark who was so lonely because family couldn't visit that he asked if he could call her mommy. Or she would get to work at 9 a.m. and leave 12 hours later because so many patients needed dialysis administered. Well, instead of responding individually, she posted a message on Facebook to her friends and her family and others to see. And it said, wear a mask, wash your hands, this is serious. 
She said the virus is real. And to see it with your own eyes, it was unbelievable. It's hard, but it's like, you have to know you've made a difference. Even if the person doesn't make it, you tried, you reached out. I put myself out there. I tried to help them either by treatment or talking, holding a hand or praying. I definitely think it's made me a better person as well as a better nurse. Well, Tanya Waddell is an amazing person of great courage, competence, compassion, and also of faith. She seems to epitomize the words of Jeremiah, blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of the drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. Well, may we all aspire to have such faith in the heat waves of life, the parched places, the salt lands, and the scorching deserts. Let us feel the cool touch of the Lord, and let us extend the cool touch. Let us trust in the Lord, and in the words of Jeremiah, when the heat comes, let us not fear. Amen. Well, in addition to the coronavirus, the phrase hotspot also refers to a personal mobile device, such as a cell phone, that can connect you to Wi-Fi. A hotspot comes in handy when you are on the go and in need of Wi-Fi, but there are also homes that don't have Wi-Fi or access to the internet. This has been a significant hardship during the pandemic for students from households of limited means who need internet for online courses and distance learning. I read a few days ago that in Baltimore, the company T-Mobile donated 10,000 Wi-Fi hotspots to city students in order to facilitate remote learning during the pandemic. And the company plans on giving away many more in the fall. Not everyone has a hotspot for connecting to the internet, but each of us has a hotspot when it comes to connecting to God. It's called prayer. For our pastoral prayer, I will be turning to the hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. And I'd also like to include an early 13th century prayer by St. Francis of Assisi, lover of creation and of all creatures. Let us pray. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, and we are here to praise your goodness. Morning by morning, you bless us and keep us. We respond to your goodness with praise, trust, and thanksgiving. We remember all those on our prayer list and those we now name silently before you. With St. Francis, we pray, O oh, Father, each day is a little life, each night a tiny death. Help us to live with faith and hope and love. Lift our duty above drudgery. Let not our strength fail, or the vision fade in the heat and burden of the day. O oh God, make us patient and full of pity, one with another in the fret and jar of life, remembering that each fights a hard fight and walks a lonely way. 
Forgive us, Lord, if we hurt our fellow souls. Teach us a gentler tone, a sweeter charity of words, and a more healing touch. Sustain us, O God, when we must face sorrow. Give us courage for the day and hope for the morrow. Day unto day may we lay hold of thy hand and look up into thy face, whatever befall, until our work is finished and the day is done. Using Jesus' words, we now pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, receive now the streams of living water. Be refreshed and renewed. Go forth into the heat of the day with the coolness of God's touch, with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Amen.